Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones is the worst thing ever made by a human. Except for the bagpipes. Why is it so bad you ask? Well it'll take a little while to explain because basically the answer involves every single thing in the film. Except for Natalie Portman's midriff. And that lady. But what I can say for sure is that every one of you out there at one point before watching this movie said to yourself, Well, The Phantom Menace was awful, but maybe this one will be better. You're tempted to rationalize it by telling yourself that at least this time there wasn't going to be a little kid. Obi-Wan was in it more, and so was Boba Fett. And you think you might have even saw a stormtrooper. The hopes were high that Star Wars could be saved, and maybe we'd all just look back on The Phantom Menace as being that really bad one. But what you didn't realize is how fucking wrong you were. And you couldn't have possibly imagined that even with all the cool Star Warsy stuff, that Attack of the Clones could actually be worse than The Phantom Menace. That could be the worst thing since bagpipes. It was at that moment when you left the theater that you learned to never trust your own judgment again. To live the rest of your life plagued with doubt and mistrust of everything and everyone. You didn't realize that the nightmare of your own life had just begun. Well, don't worry. I'm here to help. I'm here to bring closure to everyone so we can all move on. Let's jump in, shall we? I hate it when he does that. Yeah, I bet you do, asshole. Number one. Everything. Almost everything in this movie is wrong. So I didn't even know where to start. The only way to really describe it was to imagine that someone has dumped out five separate puzzles into a pile on the floor, mixed them all up, and told you to put them all back together in one hour. Or they were gonna stuff you into an old fridge filled with flesh-eating cockroaches. Why are you doing this to us? 59 minutes! <laughs> You know, if you stand back and look at this movie as a whole, it just comes off to the viewer as some kind of assembly line production. Devoid of any emotional involvement by anyone. DEB 290, do 1023. A film that coldly exploits the works of craftsmen and artists in a sterile computer controlled environment, resulting in a series of colorful, crisp images that are played in a sequence. I do understand that big movies like this are basically a business, however I would say that most movies, not all, but most movies come from some kind of creative spark somewhere. Uh. With the Star Wars prequels I'm just not sure why they were even made. And action! It's apparent that Lucas rushed out the scripts on a legal pad in one draft a few months before they started shooting without really thinking things through. And he didn't even seem to care about anything except for trying to shove in as many things as he could make into toys or video games as possible. In the first trilogy, until he got to the Ewoks of course, all the toys seemed to be a byproduct of the movie. There was a charming simplicity to it all. Now everything sucks. So do the prequels basically expose Lucas as being a shallow, emotionless businessman? I'll let you decide. But the answer is yes. Number two, the audience is expected to accept too many things that we are and are not told. So this movie, like the last one, still doesn't have a main character. Instead, now it's got two. Anakin and Obi-Wan. And I'm still not sure which one we're supposed to relate to. I would think people could relate more to Obi-Wan because he's basically a good guy who doesn't murder people. But at the same time, he's also very distant because he's like a weird monk without any personality. What? So take your pick, idiots. It doesn't really matter at this point, does it? Anakin's no longer an eight-year-old and is basically a whole new character at this point because it's been so long since we've seen him. And we barely knew Obi-Wan in the first place because he didn't do anything in the last movie. So they might as well just started the entire prequel saga here. I mean, why not? Qui-Gon died and Anakin and Padme just kind of met each other. So then we're given 60 seconds in an elevator to establish that Obi-Wan and Anakin are friends. And please notice how this is not accomplished by how they act as friends, but rather it's by them recounting things that happened in the past. Things we never see. Something about falling into a nest of gun dogs. 
Now this may seem trivial, but it establishes an important precedence in the way these films are written. We don't see or feel characters or connections with each other, we have to be told about them. With Luke and Han Solo, we see their friendship grow. At first they don't really like each other, then they save each other's asses a few times, they go through some rough patches together, and then they grow and change like real people. So when old Obi-Wan says, And he was a good friend. You get a sense that it was like a real friendship. But it never seems to have been because Obi-Wan still seems irritated with this brat. His abilities have made him, well, arrogant. And you will pay attention to my lead. Why? What? And this is the height of their friendship? All Anakin does is complain about Obi-Wan behind his back, too. He's overly critical. He never listens. It's all Obi-Wan's fault. If Master Obi-Wan caught me doing this, he'd be very grumpy. The boy is dangerous. He's jealous! And he was a good friend. So after we're told that Obi-Wan and Anakin are friends based on all the events that happened that we didn't get to see, we're then expected to know a few things without being told them. Two very integral components of the film. Intergalactic space politics and the Jedi. Now let's talk about what we do know. We know that the Jedi are an order of knights that live in a temple on Coruscant. Then the Galactic Senate is a big collection of representatives from thousands of systems that all meet in a big mushroom and vote on things. A large, corrupt, and impotent united nations in space. I'll explain the impotence later. That's what he said! Hey! Hey, you can't do that! Only guys can do that! So it really is kind of amazing how inept and corrupt a space democracy is. Quite shocking how they can't put something so big to good use. I guess size really doesn't matter. But this topic is a little too tight right now. I'll get deeper into that later. <clears throat> I'll get deeper into that later. No, I've actually been meaning to Oh. So there's a couple things that no one understands at all. Apparently anyone can replace a senator, pose as a senator, and propose sweeping legislation in place of a senator. Even a cartoon rabbit that sounds like a retard. Hello, belly. Apparently Jar Jar did it all on his own without consulting anyone after being obviously guilted into it. If only Senator Amidala were here. <laughs> Then all we know about the Sith is that they're bad guys. That's pretty much it. Are they all ex-Jedis? You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the Force. Then what is this prophecy about? What does it say? Who wrote it? When? What does bringing balance to the Force mean exactly? I don't believe this. You see, this is when a fish out of water main character comes in handy. All those people know this stuff, so they don't talk about it. But if you throw in a quick scene where a character called a protagonist has it explained to him, then it's explained to the audience as well. Aeons ago, our ancestors created our great frontier. You see, there are very few scenes like this in the prequels. A scene where somebody uh, explains what's going on. Like, scenes like this. For years, old creatures have dreamt of big starfighters. Hey, wait a minute. That thing looks familiar. Hey! How did that get in this movie? Uh, what? How was it in there? What's going on? Hey, do those guys have PKE meters? Am I going insane? My brain is collapsing in on itself. Okay, back to the review. Or like a speech like this, where, where some guy tells us what's, what the fuck's happening. Star League Justice put down your Zerium cult. They tell us who the bad guys are. We see the bad guys do something bad so we don't like them. <laughs> oh, I don't think you should be seeing this. Sorry about all this. I'm taping over some of my old VHS. How do I turn this off? Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Email me if you know how to turn this off. Wake up! Post a comment on this web zone if you know how to turn this off. Hey, listen. 
I was thinking maybe you and I could have a